Have you ever heard about the island of misfit toys? No, it's not a place from a children's book. It's real, and it's as eerie as it sounds. Nestled amid canals in the southern part of the Mexican capital, an unsettling island emerges. A place where the air holds an uncanny chill, and where the trees sag under the weight of hundreds of old, decaying dolls. The origin of this chilling spectacle traces back to a more recent period. The architect of this eerie tableau was Don Julian Santana Barrera, a hermit, who in the 1950s chose this isolated spot as his dwelling. Cracked, limbless, and caked in grime, the dolls took on a life of their own. Their glassy eyes stared blankly into the void, their disfigured bodies swaying gently in the breeze. For Don Julian, these were not mere toys. They were talismans, each one a silent sentinel standing guard against unseen forces. Over the course of 50 years, the dolls multiplied. They dangled from branches, filled his dwelling and blanketed the ground. The island transformed into a shrine, a testament to a man's obsession, or perhaps a possession. Nearby residents recount tales of Don Julian trading produce for more dolls. The condition of the dolls did not matter. Each one was welcomed into this island of misfits. Exposed to the elements, the dolls warped and soiled, their disquieting presence casting an eerie pallor over the island. The island is a boat ride away, a journey that adds an eerie note to the otherwise joyful rides boat that brings tourists through the canals. So, what could have driven a man to such strange behavior? The answer lies in a tale, perhaps real, or perhaps a figment of Don Julian's disturbed mind. Within the murmurings in the area, there are whispers of a tragic event. One day, a young girl, vibrant and full of life, met an untimely demise, drowning in the nearby waterways. This incident, whether actual or merely a creation of Don Julian's imagination, became an obsession for the hermit. Like a melody stuck on repeat, the story of the drowned girl played over and over in his mind. It was a haunting song that tugged at his heartstrings. Guided by an inexplicable compulsion, Don Julian embarked on a peculiar mission. He began hanging dolls from the island's trees, their lifeless eyes staring blankly, but he didn't stop there. His shack became a sanctuary of dolls, their glassy gazes frozen in a perpetual state of anticipation. These dolls, whether they were pristine or worn out, held a special place in Don Julian's world. They were neither mere toys nor meaningless trinkets. They were companions, offering silent camaraderie in the midst of solitude. Perhaps in his disturbed state, Don Julian saw these dolls as a shrine to the girl's spirit a shrine that held the echoes of the girl's laughter and the shadows of her dreams. Or perhaps these dolls were his armor, a protective shield against the tormented whispers of the drowned girl. But could it be that this obsession was merely a manifestation of his own loneliness? A desperate attempt to fill the void with the silent company of dolls? The answer remains a mystery, known only to the man who found solace in the company of these inanimate figures. Over the next 50 years, until his death in 2001, dolls proliferated on the island, each one a silent testament to a life lost and a mind obsessed. As if the sight of hundreds of decaying dolls wasn't eerie enough, there are tales that add a spine-chilling layer to this already unsettling place. It is said that the island, silent by day, transforms as night descends. The whispers start, soft and indistinct, like a breeze rustling through the trees. But listen closely, and you might hear words, fragments of sentences, echoes of laughter and cries. The whispers are said to be the dolls, communicating in their own language, an eerie symphony that fills the night air. And the whispers are not the only paranormal phenomenon reported here. Visitors and locals swear they've seen the dolls move. A tilt of the head here, a flicker of a limb there, as if the dolls are alive, imbued with a spectral energy. Some even claim to have seen the dolls' glassy eyes turn, tracking their movements as they navigate the island. Then there's the whistling, a haunting, ethereal sound it seems to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. It's a spectral chorus, a ghostly melody that weaves through the whispering, adding an extra layer of unease to this already eerie tableau. Yet, despite the unsettling reports, 
the island continues to draw visitors, their curiosity piqued by the tales of the doll's spectral antics. The journey to the island is a part of the experience. The only way to reach this floating speck of land is by boat. The ride, usually a joyful journey filled with music and laughter, takes on a distinct edge of macabre as it approaches the island of misfit toys. So, dare to take a ride to the island of misfit toys? Beware, the dolls might just have a tale or two to tell. Here, we find ourselves immersed in a tale that dances on the line between the living and the spectral. A tale as compelling as it is unsettling. The story of Don Julian Santana Barrera, a solitary figure whose obsession with the dolls led to a haunting spectacle of decay and disrepair. Remember, the next time you hear a whisper on the wind, it might just be a doll from the island of misfit toys telling its eerie tale.